Welcome to our evening worship service at Honeyville United Methodist Church in Weewa, Hitchcock, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. Lord God, it is only through your gospel that the longings of the human soul can be quenched. We pray you, we praise you for the salvation which you promised to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you again bless our time as we study your word. Prepare our hearts as we approach your scriptures. May we do it in a spirit of humility and reverence. May we grow in deeper love for your goodness. Lord, none but you is worthy of our praise. We pray that we would be strengthened and edified as we study your sacred scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This evening's message is coming from the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. And scripture state, tell us on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the spirit had not get given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This evening's message is titled, let the thirsty come. I say it again. Let the thirsty come. Let's get into this message. With a little help from Google, I need Google in my life, but with a little help from Google, I learned a lot about thirst. The sensation of thirst occurs when there is a loss of water from the blood cells in our bodies. As those cells pass by a particular sensor in the brain, the sensor alerts the body that water needs to be added. First, there's a dry mouth, and then a craving for fluids, and then there's a decrease in the production of saliva, and then difficulty swallowing will result. If the body still does not get the liquid it needs, it begins to suffer dehydration. The skin becomes dry and wrinkly. A fever develops, sweating stops, kidneys shut down, and death can be the end result. But you know the things that surprised me the most from my Google research is that dehydration takes place with the loss of only 8% of the body's water content. And under normal conditions, with no water intake, we can lose 2.5% of our body's water content per day. Wow. We need to be careful cutting the grass. Or if you're out on that tractor, Miss Jean, you need to be careful. You can be dehydrated and not even know it. Now maybe we can better understand at least now two of the Israelites' complaints with Moses why in the desert? And I'm going to go over two of them. First, in Exodus 15, we know that after passing through the Red Sea, the Israelites entered the desert, and for three days, for three days, they could not find any water. And then finally, the, they found water, but the water was bitter, and they could not drink it. According to scriptures, they grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? Did you bring us out here in the desert to die? These people were dehydrated. The Lord told Moses to do a very strange thing. Moses took a piece of wood and threw it into the polluted lake, and the water miraculously became sweet, and all of Israel drank and were renewed. You know, I believe that the Israelites would have listened carefully. I'm, I'm thinking that they heard this faint, faint voice in the distance. Even though Jesus Christ had not been born, this very faint voice saying, 
If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And sure enough, after several days' journey, the Israelite was thirsty again. It's something about eating and drinking. Some people like to do it several times a day. Some people like to do it all day. But then the second complaint from the Israelites, Father, in Exodus 17, the scriptures state that they quarreled again with Moses saying, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Again, the Israelites were dehydrated. This time the Lord told Moses, to do an even stranger thing in Exodus 17, 6. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. And when Moses did that, sure enough, water gushed from the rock, and all Israel drank, and they were renewed. And now this time, that faint voice can be heard even more, even though Jesus hadn't been born. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. I know too often in today's time, we look for a rational and scientific explanation for everything. But back then, Israel was firmly convinced that that was nothing else but an act of God. In fact, this water-given rock, it became a central theme in their worship as best stated in Psalm 78, 15, 16, which says he split rocks in the wilderness and gave them water abundantly from the deep and made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. That's what God's word said. We need to understand that while the Israelites were in the desert, God instituted three week-long festivals for the people to observe after they entered into the promised land. The three festivals were Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And the purpose of each of these festivals was to remind the people of the great and awesome ways that the Lord brought them to the promised land. He did not want them to forget Passover celebrated their great deliverance from Egypt and Pharaoh. Pentecost celebrated the way that the Lord fed the Israelites with food in the desert. And Tabernacles celebrated the way that the Lord supplied water for their thirst in the desert. And on this day of Pentecost, this 2024 day, it is actually the Feast of Tabernacles that I will focus on today. So our scripture readings take place in Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus is present at the festival. John chapter 7, 37 and 38 tell us that on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. Now Jesus was not talking about physical thirst. Jesus Christ was talking about spiritual thirst. And just so we are sure about that again in John verse 7, verse 39, God's word proves it all. Now this he said about the spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not given because Jesus was not yet glorified. He was speaking before. Jesus was saying to those gathered at the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, you know that rock? That rock that gushed water in the desert hundreds of years before to renew the dehydrated Jerusalem? That rock was me. <laughs> Jesus said that rock was me. I am the rock. Let the one who is thirsty come. Jesus was announcing that the rock in the desert was a foreshadowing of an even greater renewal that God would supply his people. Just as he provided for his thirsty people in the desert, 
Now he was going to provide the Holy Spirit for his thirsty people in this world. And we, we can become so spiritually dehydrated. There's a lot of spiritually hydrated people in this world. We see it in our school system, see it in our politics, and my God, we see it in the church. Understand that it was on the day of Pentecost that we celebrate the day that the true rock goes forth with the Holy Spirit who satisfies our spiritual thirst and renews all who would drink of him. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on his disciples. Just as Jesus has promised, he would pour the Spirit out upon him. Everything Jesus said came to pass. They just didn't understand it. And rivers of living water flowed out of their heart. They gushed with the gospel of Jesus Christ and everyone who was present heard it preached in their own language. They heard it preached in their own language. I talked about that this morning. During the festival of Pentecost, just as during the festival's Passover and tabernacles, men and women from the east, men and women from the west, they were present in Jerusalem. The living water, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Literally, literally, the Spirit was poured into their ears and they were refreshed and they were renewed. And in addition to being spiritual, refresh themselves. God's word says rivers of living water flowed out of their hearts. He said, well, preacher, what you talking about? What I'm saying to you is that they didn't keep it to themselves. Each one of them returned home. They returned home to the east. They returned home to the west, pouring out into others what they had seen. And what they had heard in Jerusalem this day in 2024, the river of living water that flows from Jesus Christ flows all the way to us. Thank God somebody continued to carry the water. God's word didn't die when Jesus died because he was resurrected and he was ascended. And that living water is for, is for all thirsty souls. And we drank in the precious gospel through our ears, the same Holy Spirit that brings Jesus to us through the hearing of his gospel, brings us to Jesus by giving us the gift of faith through the same hearing of his gospel. And we believe the incredible good news that we hear and our thirsty souls are refreshed. Our thirsty souls are renewed. And now as I prepare to close, someone may be asking themselves, Urban Clark, what do you mean by spiritual thirst? How is our spiritual thirst quenched by the Holy Spirit? It's all in God's word. Just check up on me. In Psalm 42, 2, the psalmist cries out, my soul thirsts for God, the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5, 5, Jesus said, Blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness and promises, for he will be satisfied. Like the Israelites of years past, our soul thirsts too. God made us to have not only a physical thirst, but also a spiritual thirst. We thirst for God, the living God. We thirst for the righteousness that comes from God. We have a spiritual thirst for spiritual things as best stated in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And we all know what it means to be dehydrated and thirst for any number of these things. We all need love. I thirst for it. I thirst for kind people. I thirst for good people. I thirst for faithful people. I pray, for, I thirst for people who have any level of self-control. 
especially in a world in which a lot of people are out of control. We know how to quench our physical thirst with water and Gatorade and sometimes cold beer. But there's only one way, one way that our spiritual thirst for God, the righteousness of God, the fruit of the spirit is quenched and we are renewed. Only the water that flows from the rock, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, will satisfy our spiritual thirst. Because the water that flows from Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. However, we are weak and we constantly fall into temptation and drink from the dead water to satisfy our spiritual thirst. But no other water will do. An ocean of water can surround us. If we drink it, we will most certainly die. And sadly, we're always being tempted to try to satisfy our spiritual thirst by drinking from the wrong water, drinking from the wrong spirit. It looks so inviting. It looked like it would surely quench our thirst for love, for joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And we fall into temptation and we drink. If tempted, if tempted, ask yourself two simple questions. Does this water flow from Jesus Christ? Does this water take us to Jesus Christ? for spiritual renewal. Two simple questions, but understand this. In John's revelation of heaven, he sees all things, a river flowing down the middle of the city. And now we know that the river is the Holy Spirit. John hears the Alpha and the Omega in Revelation 21, 6, which says to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. You can't pay for it. And further, John says in Revelations 22, 17, let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Amen. Perhaps, perhaps my message tells someone in a special way. In a way so special that if you want to now give your life to Jesus, then repeat this message with me. If you thirst, just simply say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, your thirst will be quenched with the spiritual water from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now as I bring this message to a close for those on YouTube, Jesus invite believers, those who know their need to come to him, which means aligning oneself with him trusting him, receiving his teaching, and obeying his commands. When we would believe, when we believe, we open our hands to receive that God's grace. We come and we drink. Amen.